Are the Denver Broncos giving up on the 2022 season? What's up, everyone? Welcome to Denver Broncos Syndicate, part of the Sports Syndicate family of channels where we are dedicated to bringing you content about our favorite sports teams. I am your host, Gage Madrid. Before we jump in, I need a massive favor from you guys. We are just 75 subscribers away from 1,000. We are so close to our big goal, guys. So if you could just do me a massive favor and subscribe if you have yet to do so, as well as leave a like if you're already subscribed. That is a free and easy way that you can help support this channel. Now, as we sit at the Denver Broncos week nine bye week, the team is clearly not where we expected them to be this offseason. After eight games, the team is sitting at just three and five. Although our defense has been sensational in these eight games, our offense has been anything but. Russell Wilson really struggled to get in a groove in the first six games and was also dealing with some injuries to both his shoulder and his hamstring. That all culminated in Russ missing the week seven loss to the New York Jets. Russ was able to return for last week's victory over the Jacksonville Jaguars in London, and for the first time, the passing game and the offense as a whole finally looked like it was getting into a bit of a groove, especially in the second half. Although this wasn't the root of all of our problems on offense, things did noticeably get better once Lloyd Cushenberry was injured and Graham Glasgow was inserted at center. Although I wish Lloyd a speedy recovery and don't wish injury on anybody, the the offense overall just looked like it was operating at a much higher level with Graham Glasgow at center. The Broncos were able to pick up a much needed victory against the Jags and it really helps keep our season alive as we sit at 3-5. and five. Despite the win, that did not stop general manager George Payton from making a big time trade. As we all know by now, George Payton pulled off yet another big time trade at the deadline, sending Bradley Chubb to the Miami Dolphins along with a fifth round pick in exchange for first first and fourth round draft picks as well as running back Chase Edmonds. Now there are probably two majoring opinions amongst Broncos country about this trade. The first group feels pretty confident about the trade, given the fact that the team is sorely lacking in draft picks after the Russell Wilson trade, as well as some other moves made by George Payton, so we really needed to recoup some of our losses in terms of draft picks. Obviously, not having a pick until the third round was pretty detrimental to us, and now we do have a pick in the first round, although it is the San Francisco 49ers pick, so it's probably going to be a pretty low pick in the first round. This team also feels that the Broncos have the pieces at edge rusher to kind of be able to overcome the loss of Bradley Chubb. Of course, we have Randy Gregory and Baron Browning, although they're both dealing with their fair share of injuries. We also have rookie Nick Benito, as well as Jonathan Cooper. We also brought in some additional help at that position, trading a fourth round pick to the New York Jets for Denver native edge rusher Jacob Martin. Now, the other sector of Broncos country feels that George Payton is sending the message that the team clearly was in over their head at the start of the season, and the expectations that we as the fans set were too high. That side of the fan base feels that George Payton is waving the white flag with this trade and is signaling that the team is nowhere close to contending for a championship. Now, both of these sides are pretty extreme, and ultimately, I feel that the answer lies somewhere in the middle. When asked about how much the Broncos' record factored into the team's decision to make this trade, general manager George Payton said the following, We would have made this trade regardless. We just felt the value was too good. We believe in our young depth, and we believe in our defense. Moving forward, we have other holes to fill on the offensive side of the ball we would have made this trade regardless. George Payton's words that we have other needs on the offensive side of the ball that we need to address are what really stick out to me. I think in particular, he's referring to the offensive line, which has clearly been one of our biggest problems this season as a unit. I think that it's pretty clear that more than likely, the first round pick that we received on this trade is going to be used on an offensive lineman, in particular, an offensive tackle. With Garrett Bowles coming off of a season-ending ankle injury and our question still still continuing to revolve at the right tackle position, I feel that that's going to be a big priority for the Broncos as we enter this offseason, both in free agency and in the draft. I wouldn't be surprised if the Broncos brought in multiple offensive tackles this season to help compete for a starting job at that position. Peyton also echoed that the main reason that they made this trade was because the team sorely needs draft picks. The draft value we received was significant. We just felt it was too good to pass up at the 
end of the day, and it's no secret that we need picks. It's going to help us continue to build our football team, but one thing is for certain, our goals, our expectations, they do not change. We want to win, and we believe that we can win. More importantly, we want to sustain success, and it's going to help us continue to build this football team moving forward. Not lost on the busy day, we added two players, and we're excited to welcome running back Chase Edmonds from the Dolphins and outside linebacker Jacob Martin from the Jets. Although George Payton is always going to say that the team wants to compete for a championship, I think it's pretty clear that in year one of the Russell Wilson era, it's probably not going to happen. Russ himself has not played like the championship caliber quarterback that we expected, and the team around him has not played like a championship caliber team. Coaching has also been far from championship caliber, and questions remain to be seen if Nathaniel Hackett is the right guy to lead us to the promised land. George Payton admitted it, the Broncos have holes that they need to fill, especially on the offensive side of the ball. If they can do that, they will be in a much better position to compete for a championship next year. That is ultimately why I feel this trade was made. The team knows that we are in it for the long haul with Russell Wilson with his massive contract, so we need to do whatever we can to build a championship caliber roster around him, as well as do whatever we need to do to get championship caliber play out of him. If we can give Russell Wilson some help on the offensive line and improve his plethora of weapons, especially with the return of Tim Patrick from injury next season, our passing attack can really start to gel and look like the unit we expected it to be entering this season. I'm curious, Broncos country, what type of message do you think George Payton is sending with this trade to the team as well as the fan base? Do you think that Payton legitimately feels that this team can compete right now, or do you think that he feels that we're still quite a few pieces away? Drop those comments down below. I would love to hear from you. Be sure to leave a like on this video as well as subscribe and ring the bell so that these videos appear in your notification feed. And while you're at it, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Gage Madrid NFL for even more Denver Broncos coverage. And for now, this has been another episode of Denver Broncos Syndicate. I'm your host, Gage Madrid, saying peace out and let's ride.